so uh, today we will discuss about uh, mass flow meters mass flow meters so uh, mass flow meter basically it measures the mass flow of a fluid mass flow of the fluid so uh, as we mentioned yesterday i i think i showed the slide yesterday uh, it's the mass of the fluid which is traveling past a point per unit time that is mass per time that is mass flow rate so uh, that such a measurement is required in some cases okay so you don't require a volumetric flow rather a mass flow is required in such cases you how many kilogram per second or pounds per second pounds per feet per second like that such units there so uh, uh, such uh flow rates are required um say uh, when you take the case of gas what is say natural gas or co uh, compressed natural gas such cases you need to use uh, mass rather than a volume and uh, uh be aware that temperature is going to have lot of effect on some parameters especially viscosity density okay so these two parameters whenever we uh, take the case of flow uh, these two parameters uh, we never touched upon this discussion about the effect of temperature on flow uh, that is we assume that the temperature is they are constant so in some cases you need to measure the temperature also for instance uh, you you buy uh, cooking oil cooking oil you say uh, uh, in a pouch plastic pouch no so that sunflower oil uh, that's said it is at this particular temperature this many grams at or this much liters or bracket it should be written this many grams at say 25 degrees celsius like that so uh, this uh, coming to our topic so mass flow meters we'll be uh, discussing uh, the first three type of mass flow meters today and uh, we'll take up the remaining three next day okay and um, first one is a radiation type of mass flow meter so radiation type of mass flow meter so in radiation type of mass flow meter uh, before we come to the topic we need to be uh, having a background about this radiation so you are going to use uh, basically gamma radiation for this purpose so you are aware that uh, when nuclei they decay radioactive nuclear radio isotopes they decay they produce alpha beta and gamma radiations so alpha is basically the helium helium nuclei and uh, because they are heavy it will travel only a few a uh, few centimeters in free space air and beta electrons beta particles or beta radiation comprises of high energy electrons and the gamma radiation is uh, much is of much higher energy maybe they could travel uh, several hundred meters you can stop it by lead shields lead it, they could travel through paper most materials so gamma radiation is used so the question is whether uh, they, they would cause uh, injury or harm to the operators or human personnel uh, nearby that is a question but uh, uh, usually the dosage is very low it is in the safe limits so uh, basically you express the radiation the size of the radiation radioactive source in terms of milli curies so in uh, curie madam curie and pierre curie that is what so it is comprising 37 million disintegration that is radioactive decays and usually uh, your size for um source size source size of use for uh, density uh, why do we uh, have the density discussed here say um density is mass per unit volume so if you want measure mass flow you can have a volumetric flow measured and uh, the density also recorded and then uh, compute the mass that is the idea there so usually uh, the sizes range from 5 to 10000 millicuries and uh, the most common uh, radioisotope used in industrial application is cesium 
cesium-137. 30 years. 30 years is the half lifetime. So, it will become, uh, it, its activity will become half after 30 years. Remaining uh, half after next 30 years, like that. So, and uh, for a human operator, this is, uh, uh, will be very um, low dosage. So, uh, and um, now how can we use this radioactive sources in a um, to measure density so if you have a liquid flowing through a pipe and uh, you need to measure the density means if the liquid is more viscous or more dense it is likely to absorb more radiation and if you see the table here here uh, the lead is going to absorb the most um, amount of radiation okay so it is going to uh, absorb the most amount of radiation the amount of thickness which is required uh, is much lesser compared to say uh, 0.5 specific gravity bulk material or even water so lead can stop this uh, gamma radiations and um, this is with respect to cesium 137 okay cesium 137 source so that means that you can use then uh, these things in different contexts so you can use them in uh, plants in chemical plants in uh, breweries food processing industries anywhere so you have this material flow through this uh, material flow through this uh, channel and uh, material flow through this channel and uh, this is uh, going to this is going to be penetrated by uh, the gamma radiations from this source so this is a gamma source which is fixed on this uh, across this pipe so that uh, and you are having a, a divergent beam coming from this source and you have some mechanism which is called as a shutter controller that is basically you just open the shutter and just gamma radiation is uh, released from here and then uh, on the other end you have detector you have different types of detectors you can have skin dilating detectors jigger detectors all those things and um, from that you will get an electrical signal so more viscous the less uh, uh, most more dense fluid uh, flows through this then that is going to have a less uh, electrical signal at this end that is the idea there so uh, the radiation is uh, certified to be safe in fact you don't require any certification for this uh, operating such devices you don't need just like uh, if you are uh, going to set up an x-ray unit in a hospital or a clinic you will have to get a lot of certifications you will have to get approvals from the radiation safety board all those things such approvals nothing are required you can just buy the thing place there forget that's it because uh, it's assumed to be very safe that is what and um, uh, this is another to uh, configuration which shows how this could be placed at two angles at right angles to each other just like your periscope okay and um, no, so um, that is the basic idea of a densitometer densitometer using gamma radiation source so this is a very specific product from vega vega is a not it's not the helmet company vega it's a this is another vega uh, uh, the a multinational company which makes um, such densitometers radiation type densitometer so you have this uh, radioactive source on this side the gamma isotope the uh, cesium 137 isotope on this end and this is your detector side and uh, this is your pipe the process fluid flows through this pipe and you are going to measure the density you are going to get an electrical signal at this end okay so uh, that is you can go to this link and follow the data sheet there is a data sheet and all such things there so um, to use this uh, densitometer uh, to measure mass flow 
you can have two configurations one is you can have a separate densitometer and another uh, separate volume flow meter and then combine these outputs and then compute the mass okay hope the idea is clear a separate densitometer and a separate volumetric flow meter and combine the outputs of this in some uh, say a microcontroller or any device and then um, um, compute the mass ok density and volume is available you can compute the mass the other other option is you you have devices which have combined uh, density and mass uh, uh, density and volumetric flow sensors in the same package so you uh, that means that you can compute the um, what do you say <coughs> parameters in the same device itself you can get an output so this is combining a magnetic flow meter magnetic flow meter and also a radiation type densitometer in a single unit so you can have even an ultrasound uh, flow meter we are not discussing any ultrasound flow meter or anything but uh, uh, those who are doing uh, hobby projects uh, would have uh, explored the use of ultrasound for different applications say measuring the distance yeah, but uh, mostly use yes, this uh, flow measurements you will use hall effect sensors that's much more um, accurate accuracy is uh, you can't say but that is much more a uh, manageable thing so uh, this is the second type of configuration so where you have this combined package you have the uh, mass flow meter and the densitometer in a single unit right so that is the radiation type of mass flow meter the so radiation here refers to the gamma radiation gamma radiation right now uh, second type of uh, mass flow meter is what you call as a angular momentum type of mass flow meters angular momentum type of mass flow meter so you you have a you have the newton's second law and uh, you where you will relate the torque and the moment of inertia and angular acceleration and you can relate the angular momentum with the angular velocity and the moment of inertia in this is the same manner so and the moment of inertia is defined as mr square where r is the radius of gyr gyration all these things are in pounds or the pounds imperial units radians per second feet per pounds so um so that is uh, um <coughs> from this you can make a substitution you can substitute the values here for i the moment of inertia and you get the expression for y and h that is angular momentum and the angular um, and the torque angular momentum and the torque and your angular acceleration is omega by t so you can make a substitution again for um, alpha and uh, from this you can get the mass flow rate so what basically that is mass per unit time but what basically means that uh, your r value is constant r value is constant for a particular system if you have a uh, um, device to measure the uh, mass flow meter a, a mass flow meter in a particular type of mass flow meter the radius of gyration is a constant so uh, if you just accelerate this fluid and then um, make a measurement uh, say an angular mo uh, so an angular momentum is introduced to this fluid so if you provide some momentum to this fluid and then um, and if you make the measurement of the torque that means uh, it is going to uh, what is torque turning effective force that is uh, it is this fluid which is uh, to which you have imparted momentum is going to display some other thing some other mechanism mechanical arrangement which is going to deflect so uh, that is proportional to the angular momentum so you can make this uh, measurements you can make this measurements of mass flow rate 
so uh, based on this you have a couple of devices a uh, couple of devices say your impeller uh, turbine flow meter is one particular thing uh, here you have two mechanisms one is an impeller and the other one is a turbine so uh, even though the de de device as such looks a bit scary but it is one of the simplest things we can we find in use uh, basically uh, you have this fluid flowing through a pipe and you have two mechanisms one is called as an impeller another one is called as a turbine okay the class is with me no okay people are there yes yes okay so uh, uh, you have a impeller and a turbine and this impeller has uh, what is a pathway so you can say holes through which this fluid can flow and this impeller will be rotated by uh, you will be exciting it by uh, a, s a magnetic arrange electromagnetic arrangement so it's basically a motor you'll be rotating it at a particular uh, speed a constant speed and so the fluid that comes in through this uh, is imparted some angular momentum and then it flows into the turbine and it causes the turbine to deflect the turbine is uh, 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 say uh, it's it's not directly coupled to this impeller the turbine is independently rotating and turbine rotates because of this momentum provided by this fluid so this is going to deflect the turbine is going to be rotated maybe in the opposite direction so and this deflection will be uh, just like your uh, we have the spring arrangement in a galvanometer spring arrangement in a galvanometer this is going to be uh, uh, there is a restraining spring okay so uh, and that deflection will be proportional to the torque which is provided by this so uh, so that is and the torque is proportional to this angular momentum so in this manner you will be able to measure this mass flow this mass flow so you are using this this basic principle this basic principle this basic principle to compute the mass flow rate okay so that is an impeller uh, turbine flow meter here uh, whatever is shown here is uh, i think this gif is partial only so this is the impeller turbine flow meter now uh, uh, how from this turbine how you pick up this is basically you can say that this you have electromagnetic coils say say what you whatever is shown here is an electromagnetic coil there <coughs> DC generator I to consider either you can consider this as a DC generator uh, not a DC generator a frequency it's a, it's a frequency proportional to this it's not a DC it's an AC signal so alternating signal so you you have uh, uh, an output which is proportional to the frequency of rotation of this turbine so you will have electromagnetic pickups here this ends so signal is induced at this and uh, up, uh, a frequency whose frequency will be proportional to the velocity of the fluid basically this is uh, a generator sort of arrangement so impeller turbine flow meter so different uh, configurations are there from very small ones which you use in uh, equipments like your coffee vending machine to large ones which you use in pipes industrial processes uh, whatever is shown here is a, is a impeller turbine flow meter used in, in industry industrial uh, setup so um, this is an impeller turbine flow meter which is used in a coffee vending machine okay so uh, i don't know whether this brand is available in uh, in our place okay so uh, this is a picture lifted out from the net so uh, basically uh, a coffee vending machine 
say coffee vending machine uh, how do you program a coffee vending machine let me ask how do you program a coffee vending machine you are learning it how, how, how what all things are there hello does it have a microcontroller there it's a uh, yeah it's a simple device in fact it doesn't have much complications as as we think basically you have to operate some solenoid valves you will have to uh, measure the volume so uh, this coffee vending machines which are having volumetric flows say uh, uh, what is the quantity of tea which you get a tea or coffee which you get in a cup i think it is uh, 25 ml alle 25 ml alle 25 ml ano 20 ml ano how much in railways hmm instrumentation engineers what is the uh, capacity of the tea cup paper cup which you get in uh, uh, on board your trains and all next time you observe aro ondu parayan povunnallo someone is going to say paper cup quantity uh, the in how much ml okay we will assume it is 25 ml so okay 25 ml so uh, uh, how basically uh, this uh, volumetric type you say that uh, uh, the concept here is that you have a water tank also there and a coffee powder thing or a tea powder bin also there compartment there it's in this machine and the user selects tea for instance and then uh, the water uh, a fixed quantity of water say 25 ml of water has to be um, channeled from the has to be pumped from the uh, water compartment into the heater where it is mixed with the tea powder a fixed quantity of tea powder or uh, coffee powder and then it's boiled it's heated and uh, milk so uh, solvents are also added and then <coughs> it's blended and just dispensed through this dispenser here so uh, this particular uh, mechanism which uses uh, as a volumetric flow type of mechanism say here this is the inlet for water if you see the arrow here this is inlet for water and this is the outlet for water so this water just comes in through this inlet and then it will rotate this impeller it is it is going to rotate this impeller and the water is exiting out through this uh, opening here outside and if you observe these two dots these two dots these are magnets these are magnets these are two magnets tiny magnets say, same as visible here and uh, so um, you know the capacity of this chamber and you know that how many in how many revolutions this is going to dispense um, say 25 ml of water right yes you uh, you have programmed it so you say that this if it is if it is rotating 10 times it is going to uh, dispense say 25 ml of water so you can measure using this uh, so this uh, once this is completing uh, you can get signals uh, signals from this these are the ports and just plug into your uh, PCB where you could have even just a simple um, digital IC will do you don't need any complications as a microcontroller but well if you want to make it uh, you are interfacing a display all those things then you it's always good to have a microcontroller other than that if it is a dumb machine where you just need to just press tea or coffee that's if only such a thing is there it's not going to require any other thing any other um, microcontroller or anything like that i hope someone can make such a thing all these parts are available commercially or these things are available commercially uh, you can give a try um, if someone has 
such spares they can make it at all. This, this doesn't cost much also this whatever is shown is a brass you will get uh, much cheaper ones also now um, uh, so you uh, and once you get a signal say 25 ml has been dispensed you will be um, sending the signal to the pump to turn it off turn off the supply turn off this inlet so water pump from water pump will be stopped so you'll turn off the solenoid valve usually it is a solenoid valve the ones which you find in your washing machines all those things are solenoid valves solenoid valves are it's a solenoid is an electromag it's a coil so you apply energize it it's going to uh, what do you say close or open so uh, basically a coil and a, a metal strip it in that you will be energizing it to activate you will be uh, applying voltage to it to activate it it's, uh, make it uh, so uh, active so uh, so that is that is a basic idea in impeller based uh, or turbine flow meter which is used in coffee vending machine so this is an application so you needn't go very far looking for this then one particular type which is often mistaken as an impeller um, turbine flow meter is this particular thing this is uh, what is YFS2201 this is commonly available in this all these uh, online sites or even shops for uh, hobbies this is basically a hall effect sensor based product so um, here also the con concept same concept is same uh, this is this uh, paddle wheel what you call it, or turbine wheel whatever you call it that's coming in the path of this fluid the same path so the fluid is coming in through this and it is pumped out through this path we'll assume like that this is going to rotate and there is a hall effect sensor there hall effect sensor what is hall effect what is hall effect what is hall effect mm, this is flow rates I put up a uh, picture above on this what is of uh, hall effect people are there if, I, if it was the actual class I could have straight away asked someone I really enjoyed uh, uh, the physical classes there um, it wasn't it was less stressful 